Hey everyone, and welcome to the August edition of The Shakedown. I'm your host, Mallory G. You may be noticing that I am not in my usual news studio. I do not have the effort or the energy to put up a green screen. In fact, I did not have the energy or the effort to even really write out a script. I started one about two weeks ago. I started an outline. Um, and as always, there was tons of things that I could cover, uh, lots of things to talk about. But then I started grad school. Um, for those of you who don't know what is going on in my personal life, which why would you? Um, but I did a couple lives about it back in um, April to talk about what was going on. I was accepted into a school counseling and clinical mental health master's program. And I started last Monday, a week ago yesterday. Um, on Mondays, I take two classes from 4.45 until 9.50. And uh, it is exhausting, but they are two of the most incredible courses I've ever taken. And I am so enthralled with them. Um, and also really exhausted, <laughs> exhausted at the end of the night. On Wednesdays, I take intro to school counseling where I learn, you know, what it is to be a school counselor, all the ins and outs, the things the school counselors do and they accomplish. Um, and so because of getting those syllabi and needing to buy books and mapping out the beginning of fall for my classes, my son's classes, my husband's classes, my daughter, um, just, you know, being two and a half, I just couldn't, I didn't have time for the shakedown and that's the beauty of having a youtube channel is you just do what you want to do when you want to do it um but because i have like you know my own set of standards i felt like oh am i really gonna let august end and not have an episode and as fate would have it something really presented itself to me last night that really gave me an episode um and i'm really just flying by the seat of my pants which is typically how i function the best um if I've come up with a catchy title like I want to, you might be like, oh my God, this was clickbait. Yes and no. <laughs> the title of this episode is kind of clickbait, but I hope that you'll watch the whole way through. Hopefully I don't talk on for too long. Um, but I was presented with a Instagram, an Instagram post last night from Dr. Kiona. I don't know Dr. Kiona. Dr. Kiona has apparently gone through some media trauma. Um, and media trauma is a term that I think that we really need to start embracing as a society because it's real. It is absolutely a very real thing. I experienced it and I am still experiencing the aftermath, the side effects of that experience. Um, and it's not been easy, <laughs> to say the least. Um, so this was the post. So I'm going to put it up here. The post says, media trauma is abuse. Uh, that is the first screenshot. So then the next one breaks down what media trauma is. Let me make it a little bit bigger here so I can read it because I am getting old. Media trauma is media-based trauma. One, media humiliation, exploitation, and misrepresentation sensationalizing a story, using real name in humiliating headlines or show titles, dishonest storytelling, bias framing or spin, dehumanizing an individual or group, stereotyping, deceptive production, reporting or editing practices, representing fabricated stories as truth, crafting innocent people into villains, objectifying a person, seeing story as simply content. I'm going to time out because if you think that I'm going to make this entire video about me, I assure you I'm not. Please just follow with me. Stay with me. Exploitive, exploitative releases barring subjects from all remedies. Media producer benefits while individual group suffers. Super, survivor, insensens <laughs> survivor insensitivity and re-traumatization victim blaming and shaming, adding or recreating crime scenes for shock value, re-traumatizing during filming and interview, no advocate on set, no therapist for aftercare, violating expectations, leaking private information, insensitive series or episode titles or promo material, putting survivors in unsafe situations. You guys can read the rest, okay? Um, 
Then it talks about more public shaming, online cruelty, and cancel culture, exposing people's flaws for entertainment value. I can't begin to even come close to expressing how that is not only so prevalent in our society on what we consume, especially when we talk about things like reality TV, but it is becoming the crux of anti-MLM content on YouTube and Instagram. Stay with me. Cyberbullying or online harassment. Flaming, posting derogatory comments about another person. Inflaming, making a mountain out of a molehill, assigning malicious intent that did not exist. This, I mean, this right here was literally what happened to me. Assigning malicious intent that did not exist. Social media attacks left unmoderated. <laughs> Comments on news or media unhinged and unmoderated, keeping real names and mugshots, negative reviews, revenge porn, outing and trickery, screenshotting and sharing private texts with a motive to harm. Doxing, which this community loves to call things that doxing that aren't doxing and things that are doxing, you know, wh whatever. Um, catfishing, impersonation. Now, let's be clear, impersonating a person, like someone as creating a parody is different than like pretending you are them in the intent to fool other people. Cyber stalking, creating fear by sending and posting messages, cancellations with no real ev evidence and no due process. Media amplification of public takedowns without due process. Okay, so obviously this is something that's talking about a much bigger, like on a major scale, right? Some popular examples of media trauma abuse are documentaries being made of Britney Spears without her input or consent. Kanye publicizing Kim's private text messages, right? We see this happen to famous people and we're like, oh, that shouldn't happen. This is the one that I really think that we need to look at. Accountability campaigns. In the anti-MLM community, we preach, I preached accountability. My videos when I started out were with the intention of being kind, choosing kindness, but holding people accountable for what they said. But at what point have we crossed a line as a as content creators? I'm not gonna say as a movement, because there are plenty of people who create content that don't do this. <coughs> Money of people who very clearly blur faces, cover up names, make sure that the person who is being critiqued is completely unidentifiable, okay? And the post goes on to talk about media trauma can, can and often leads to murder and or suicide, sometimes both. Media trauma can be fatal. And then it also goes on to say, think about how often you consume abuse in the form of media daily. Scroll through your phone and count the number of times you hear about strangers without questioning the statements being made of them, including celebrities. Now, I know it's so easy for us to just like disregard celebrities because they're celebrities, but we have to remember that they're people too. Like they were once little babies who were helpless and had to be raised to walk and talk and feed themselves and do all the things. So it also asks us to reflect on how prevalent abuse and exploitive behaviors exist just in the digital realm alone. The issue with media trauma is it is not validated as a form of abuse and there are very few resources for treatment or therapy. There are barely definitions for this phenomenon. Trying to seek treatment for media-based trauma does not qualify under PTSD because post-traumatic indicates that the event is over. Media trauma lasts forever. Your digital footprint is forever. There is no post-trauma. It is repetitive and follows you for the rest of your life. This trauma is lifelong. And this goes on to talk about how there's no protections against media trauma because even if you try to file a suit, you're looking at 15K just to file, 15K price tag. So justice is not accessible. With the invention of social media, everyone with a public account is considered a public figure. And you hear that in, I said it, we all say it, that we didn't blur faces because they're a public figure. I don't have to blur their face because they're a public figure. And anyone regardless of social media is subject to media trauma. So because we have decided they're a public figure, we don't need to blur their face. I know I can only speak for myself, but I know what it felt like when somebody 
used my image to debunk or retaliate against me, even if they were going off the wall and they're, you know, you know, when the anti anti MLM people were using me as, as, you know, uh, a catalyst or whatever fire for their argument, I still, you know, what they were saying was ludicrous, but I still know how it made me feel. I know how I felt. The new public figure is not wealthy, but are deemed public figure due to media-based power while not having the resources to protect themselves, protect others, or seek justice. So when I think about the people in the anti-MLM content realm on YouTube, I mean, I know that there are some that have been sued, that have dealt with it. And some people might be in different positions than others, but by and large, it costs a lot of money to protect yourself. You don't have a massive corporation, a lawyer that's on retainer that your company is paying for to protect you. All in the name of entertainment and your First Amendment rights, which we have. We have. It's a fine, it's a gray area, right? We're, we're talking about a gray area here where we have First Amendment rights to discuss anything that is publicly put on the internet. It's called the Fair Use Act. We all have it in our, well, I don't have it anymore, but we all had it. I had it. Everybody else that I am not going to name, um, because God forbid that I name any of them, but I'm, you know, I know that they all have disclaimers about the Fair Use Act, and that is to protect themselves. But I'm starting to wonder if you need to put something up to protect yourself from legal action or to protect yourself if legal action happens. You can say, no, 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 I had this up, I had a disclaimer. Are we going about it the right way? The movement of educating people on multi-level marketing is too important. It's too important and I think that, I'll, I'll speak for myself, I definitely lost sight of what the main motive was, what the main goal was when I was doing reaction videos to some of the bigger names and not even some of the bigger names. Just things that I would see online, they're like, oh my gosh, she's lying, she's making that up, that's not true, so let me put her face on my page and let me debunk it. One of the things I've learned in the past two weeks of, of classes is that in order for therapy to happen, okay, so they just stay with me here, in order for counseling to happen, there's a couple things that need to be in place. One of the main things is you have to have a trained counselor, somebody who is professionally capable of giving counseling, and the other one of the, of the four, but the, the two that I wanna focus on, the other one is someone who is willing to be counseled, who is seeking help. The same thing can be said for education, for online education. Those of us that create online education about multi-level marketing at this point are pretty well knowledgeable. There's no degree. I can't say I have a master's degree in, in you know, consumer, well, maybe that exists. I don't know, but there's definitely no master's degree in anti-MLM, right? But we are, as a, by and large, we are pretty knowledgeable, you know, borderline experts, right? Um, but the, the people that we're targeting our content towards, right? We all will say, we're targeting towards the people who will find it, who need to have the lie exposed. Sure. But at the end of the day, when you're showing, when we, I'm not even gonna say you're, when we are showing the faces as clear as day of who we are debunking, it no longer becomes about what they are saying. I think that this is a really hard truth to swallow, to come to terms with. It's, it, it, it becomes twofold. On the surface, no, this is about education, it's about what they're saying, but we're human, um, we're women. A lot of us are women who were raised in the 90s. And as I have definitely experienced, a lot of us are catty, bitchy women. <laughs> when we see a face, we immediately attach a, a preconceived notion, an idea about the person who is saying the thing. If we would happen to see that person out, it might be less likely that we would treat them with kindness 
or at least at the under the neath the surface of kindness be judging them because of what they posted online you know if these people and let's i know the what i'm about i know that the example i'm about to give is highly improbable okay so i'm just like putting that out there this is highly improbable but i am going to use boss lee as an example so just stay with me let's just say hypothetically speaking one day boss lee burns all of her bridges she can't you know network marketing just completely she can't do it anymore okay right i mean everybody give like a collective eye roll she can't do it anymore and you know i made the prediction she would go into the book circuit maybe that doesn't work out for her either so let's just say in this completely improbable hypothetical situation she leaves network marketing altogether and she decides to like get a real job or start a real business and people who might invest with her who've never heard of her google her and what comes up I can't help but feel like that would be a shitty situation. And you want to know why I feel that way? Because it does not allow her the opportunity to grow and change. We as a collective community have pigeonholed a lot of these people into being the villain forever. And I know there's a really, like, there's going to be a lot of debate about the 1% the CEOs, I'm never going to feel this way about Stuart McMillan and Ray Ardenetta. They are the scum of the earth as far as I'm concerned. I definitely have more of a bias against men. I will acknowledge that. I will not be forgiving of those men, um, especially white, mediocre uh, men like Stuart McMillan. However, he is also still a person. And when we focus more on the person identifying the person and less on what it is they're doing and what they're saying we are we are painting them as the villain forever they'll never be able to recover and this is not something that like my video is going to make a big change this is not just an anti mlm problem this is by and large like the this is how our society functions now we are used to operating this way. Take, for example, um, who was the Ray Ray? Ray J? Ray J. What was he? Brandy's brother or something? And he was in like a sex tape with somebody, right? And like the second you see Ray J, you're just like, oh yeah, sex tape guy. I know nothing else about that guy. Because the media exploited that whole situation. It became a thing. And, you know, maybe you could say, no, oh, I know what Rage is. Okay. But I'm just saying that there are going to be people in this world who will have one opinion of someone because of the media. And when you create content on the internet, you become the media. I just think that this is something really interesting that we need to start as a movement reflecting on. Um, and so to go in with my title... I do want to offer up an apology and it's I and I and it's sincere and it's true um, it's kind of all coming out ahead at a good time too because I have my master's work to focus on I'm starting a new part-time job on Tuesday nights where I'm teaching musical theater again um, plus my regular job plus my family so making YouTube content is not gonna be at the forefront for right now it just it can't be um, but I do owe an apology to anyone who I made a video on where I did not blur your face, where I did not do a, su a sufficient job of masking your identity and in so doing or not doing created a, created an image and a preconceived notion, a reputation for you that was based on the things you said. I assigned a, a, uh, a personality trait to you. And even when you talk about people like Angela Sumner, she said horrible things. And I don't 
want to believe, you know, well, I want to believe that there's, there's good in everybody. She's not really shown us that, right? Um, but don't we have to be better than the people who are showing the worst of themselves in the world? I don't know that the way that we blew up this civilian on the internet. I mean, she was everywhere. She was everywhere. And for people who are narcissistic, that feeds into what they want. And, and, and I mean, there's just, there's so many layers here. There's so many layers. Um, I'm actually not even sure if I efficiently flushed out the whole concept of people who want to learn with the therapy and whatever. My point with that, sorry, going like back a couple steps, is if we are offering education, it it has to reach people that want to learn and want to change. And yes, it is reaching people who have left their companies, who have found us and said, because I found your content, I didn't join an MLM. But we're not thinking about the irreparable damage we are doing to the people that we are reacting to. They are not going to hear us. They are not going to watch a video nine times out of 10. I know there was a Jessica Hickson situation with a, with a video that that is a little different. But those are rare. These people, Boss Lee, Sarah Hill, Brittany Rose, they're not going to watch our videos and be like, oh my God, they're right. No, they're going to feel attacked. And I'm not excusing anything they ever say. I'm not excusing the faith manipulation. The faith manipulation drives me absolutely insane. But there's still people. They are still subject to emotion and some level of respect, even if Brittany Rose puts all the let's go brain and stuff all over her Instagram. Like there are things that I'm never going to agree with people. But we have to do better on educating in this space. In my master's program, one of the classes I'm taking is group counseling experience. And our big summative assignment is creating a group therapy experience, a group counseling experience, for something that you, the student, I, the student, would want to lead a group on. And I am so excited because I am creating. I did a ton of research today, compiling all my sources. Tomorrow I'm gonna to start reading the sources. I am going to create a group experience for people who have left a high demand or high control environment, work environment, church environment, cults, things like that. It's something that doesn't exist as far as I know. There aren't group therapy for people who have suffered the trauma of being ghosted, of losing thousands of dollars. And so that's how I'm going to use the time that I can, the resources that I have to focus my knowledge, my passion about educating on this. And you know, I, I may be gone for a little while from YouTube. I don't, I mean, I don't know. Who knows, you know, next week something might pop up that I want to talk about. But I think it's important that, you know, I stop reading the No Guts, No Story book because what am I actually doing? I'm giving airtime to a really poorly written book. And you could argue, well, I'm showing the lies and the exposure. People weren't going to read that book. So I'm reading it to, let's just, let's just be honest, I'm reading it to make fun. Right, I'm reading it for entertainment value. I'm not reading it to be educational. I could say up and down that I am, but I'm not. So I'm done with that. I'm done with that. I want to encourage everybody who is on the internet creating anti-MLM content or consuming anti-MLM content. To really, you we have become so good at critiquing and discerning what is bullshit when it comes to multi-level marketing that we have become blind to what is toxic or bullshit or problematic in our own content that we consume because we we lie to ourselves or we, we make ourselves feel better by saying, well, it's educational. We are educating, sure. 
Sure, that's not wrong, but what else is happening? Multiple things can be happening at once. You can be educating and also shaming at the same time. You can, and we are. And we have to find other ways, more compassionate ways to educate people who find it on what to expect. I don't know that I have the answer other than I'm going to keep focusing on, you know, creating this group and um, working on focusing on the companies, the companies. And if I find something that somebody posts that I feel needs to be addressed or like really needs to be dissected, being really meticulous about how it is presented so that it is not clear to anyone who it is. Um, so with that, I just, I wanted to say one more time, I am sorry to anyone who has, to anyone I've done a video on that felt attacked or personally targeted by me. Um, I truly, I, I, that was not my intention. Um, because I know what it feels like to have people talk about you on the internet. I know what it feels like to have people lie about you on the internet. I know intimately what that feels like. I know exactly where to go to find at minimum four hour, two hour long videos that talk directly about me by name, calling out my flaws, the human parts of me, and not giving me room to ever then change in the eye of the public. I know intimately what it feels like to have people write about you in the comments and say things like, to think she's a mother and a teacher. <laughs> I know how that can cut, especially when you think it's people that respected you, that you respected them. I know what that can feel like. And even though I feel that the situations are still slightly different, because in my situation, I knew these people directly. And in these situations, the people I react to are perfect strangers. And the things I'm reacting to, I view to be misleading to the general public. It doesn't change how it makes you feel. And me as the creator, I don't have the right to sit here and tell you that you you can't feel that way because it's not bullying. It might not be bullying. The intention might not be bullying, but that doesn't change how it actually cuts. So I don't know when my next video will be. Um, I don't, I don't know when my next video will be, but it feels good to um, kind of give it some closure, give it a, a like a little send off for the time being. Um, not like a grand departure. I'm not announcing my departure. I know this isn't the YouTube airport, but just that I don't have any plans on creating any content for a little while because I, I want to focus on my life and becoming a better person. And I hope that you all will continue to consume your content with a keen eye. I hope you all have a great day. And remember, as always, through kindness, education, empathy, and patience, we create a lasting movement. So keep calm and I'll see you next time. Take care.